By the way, this is the container of all the bones I got out of just one pellet. I mean, that is awesome. There are a ton of bones in here and they're very clean. I can't wait to show you. How are you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato and you are watching Nature Here and Now. Okay, so check this out. I'm sure a lot of you already know that when an owl eats, it either breaks its food items up with its, its beak and its talons or it swallows that food down whole. That food goes into the gullet and basically what the gullet does is it squeezes all the juices and nutrition, the vitamins and minerals, out of that food item, okay? It squeezes it all out and it leaves behind the undigestible materials which are like the fur or feathers and bones and teeth and all that good stuff. Eventually when everything's squeezed out of that food, the owl will cough up those undigestibles in the form of a pellet and it kind of looks like, well, looks like this. This is from a barn owl and it kind of looks like it came out the other end, doesn't it? Um, you know, they come out a little moist, kind of like a, a hairball. Um, but eventually they dry up and they become really firm because you got to remember this was really squeezed, really compressed to get all the nutrition out. And when it comes time to dissect these, if you're into that kind of thing, it's a very, very tedious process, especially if you're on a spectrum like I am, because you don't want to break any of those bones. You know, a lot of the ribs and things are thinner than a pin, so they're very, very fragile. And picking them out from all this fur and stuff, it's really hard not to snap or break or lose any of those bones. Well, I had an owl program for the public a few days ago, and I wanted to make another, I wanted to take apart another pellet to show to the public, but I decided to run a bit of an experiment this time. Now, you've probably noticed if you've dissected owl pellets before, those bones come out rather gray or brown, almost looking like the background behind me. They don't come out looking like nice white bones. Um, so I decided I'm going to do it a bit different this time. I threw the pellet in a jar of water for several weeks and I started stirring it up and, um, you know, pulling apart the pellet as it was getting soft. And the nice bonus is once these pellets have been soaked for a really long time, the bones become much more forgiving. Uh, they don't, they're not as brittle. They don't snap as easily as they, they did in previous experiments I've run. So, um, you know, that's a really nice bonus. And I just kept shaking the jar and agitating it every couple of days until finally everything was good and saturated. And I took some toothpicks and I started, you know, removing all the fur that I could from everything. I would skim off any excess fur that floated to the top. And I just did all that until I had nothing left but bones. Bones always look best when they're white, don't they? So I wanted that appearance, you know? I wanted to be able to share with the public some nice clean bones and I wanted to see if I could figure out how to do that. A lot of people use bleach to clean bones and other natural artifacts out there, but I don't like it. It smells weird, it gets kind of gummy, and it actually causes some of the bones and stuff to flake apart, and I just can't stand it. So years ago, my mom found a fox skeleton when we went for a walk. I brought it home, and I didn't want to use bleach, so I was like, what would happen if I poured peroxide into a bucket with the bones? And sure enough, those bones came out really nice you know, really white. So I tried it with these pellet bones and wow, they came out beautiful. Um, what's really cool is one pellet can have the remains of either one or three or even four food items. You know, and if it's in the Pine Barrens, they'll have not just mice and shrews, but they might have little snakes or lizard skeletons in them. I gotta find one of those. Um, so afterwards, you know, getting all these bones, I learned that I had the remains of three different rodents in just this one barn owl pellet. And it's really cool. So basically, if you're into dissecting owl pellets and you want those bones to come out nice and clean so that you can show them to people, try soaking them in some hydrogen peroxide because they came out beautiful, you have to agree. Aren't those bones awesome? You know, all those bones in one pellet. Uh, it's just, it's so much fun. And, uh, you know, when I shared it with the public and showed everybody at the event, they just loved it. They were so excited and wanted to go home and do it themselves. And that's what it's all about. So, anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I had a lot of fun cleaning these, these bones up, and I'm so happy how they came out. And I'm glad I got to share them with you guys. So, once again, I'm Chris Ignato. 
Signing out.